Oh, hello, Mr. Hand. Hey there, meet my friend, Mr. Hand. Come, let me tell you about my body part friends. Zoom in! Eyes. The eyes help you see things around. Did you see that? Phew, my eyes just saved me. Ears. The ears help you listen. Nose. The nose helps you smell. Teeth. The teeth help you bite and chew delicious food. Mmm, yummy. Neck. The neck helps you to hold up the head. It also contains several blood vessels that allow blood to reach the head and the brain. Oh, here comes Mr. Hand again. The hands help you do a lot of things. The hands help you play sports. They help you to do heavy labor, like fixing a nail on the wall. Even when you're talking, your hands tend to move to express what you want to say. Fingers. The fingers help you hold on to things. Legs. Your legs help you move around, walk and run. You can kick a football and even play with the skipping rope. Feet. The feet consists of multiple bones and soft tissues which support the weight of an upright human. Trivia time! A human eye can distinguish about 10 million different colors. And a human nose remembers up to 50,000 different scents. So this is me zooming out. Hello friends. You might be wondering what I was doing in that hole. Well, that is one of my usual trips to find something new. And guess what I found today? Ta-da! This is the bag of five senses. Come, let's see what's inside. Zoom in! Whoa! These are the five senses. Sense of sight. Sense of hearing, sense of smell, sense of taste, and sense of touch. These are the eyes. They help you see. Yes, you're using them right now while looking at me. Amazing, isn't it? Your eyes help you to see things. Just like how it will help us to see what's next. These are the ears. They help you hear. Do you hear that? Wonderful music, isn't it? Your ears help you hear. So whenever you hear beautiful things like birds chirping or a car blowing its horn, you know it's your sense of hearing. Ugh, I smell something. Is it coming from the garbage bin outside? This is your nose. It helps you smell different things. It could be something stinky like the garbage or something delicious. Ah, like a mug of hot chocolate. This is your tongue. It helps you taste different kinds of food. Hey, that's a pizza! Mmm, yummy! Whether it's spicy or sour sweet 
or bitter? You know it all because of the sense of taste. And this is your skin. It helps you touch and feel things. When you touch clay and touch wood, do they feel different to you? Does the clay seem soft and smooth and the wood seems hard and rough? Your skin helps you know whether something is hot or cold, liquid or solid, soft or hard. Remember King Midas who was cursed that his touch would turn anything into gold. <laughs> but don't worry. That's not gonna happen to you. Trivia time! Did you know that the snakes hear from their jawbones? And 80% of what humans experience as taste is actually smell. Now I need to go back to that hole to find out something more for you. So this is me zooming out. Tune in next time for some more fun facts. Happy Halloween, my friends! <laughs> hmm, I know it's not Halloween today. But can you guess what I'm going to talk about? <laughs> yes, that's right! Bones! Zoom in! Hey, don't be scared. That's not a ghost. That's just how your skeletal system looks like. Come! Let's talk a little more about the bones in your body. Let's start with the head. Cranium. This is the cranium. It protects the brain from bumps and knocks. Mandible. The lower part of the skull is called the mandible. It is the largest and the strongest bone of your face. Scapula. It is a triangular shaped bone that is protected by surrounding muscles. It is commonly called the shoulder blade. Rib gauge. The rib gauge protects your heart and lungs. It is actually very delicate and can be damaged by accidents, sports or even a powerful sneeze. The arm consists of three large bones. The humerus bone forms the upper arm. The radius and the ulna are the two bones which form the lower arm. You have one radius and one ulna in each arm. The radius and ulna bones connect between the elbow joint and the wrist. Your palm consists of three groups of bones. Carpals, metacarpals and phalanges. Femur. The femur or thigh bone is the longest, heaviest and strongest bone in the entire human body. All of the body's weight is supported by the femurs during many activities such as running, jumping, walking and standing. Patella. The patella is also known as the kneecap. It is a thick, circular, triangular bone which covers and protects the surface of the knee joint. Fibula. The fibula is the outer and thinner bone of the lower leg. Its main function is to provide attachment for muscles. However, it doesn't give much support and strength to the leg. Tibia. The tibia is a large bone located in the lower leg of the human body. It is also known as the shin bone and is the strongest weight-bearing bone. Just like your palm, your foot also consists of two groups of bones, tarsals and metatarsals. Trivia time! Did you know that half of your body's bones are in hands and feet and 
an infant has 300 bones, whereas an adult has 206 bones. This is because some smaller bones fuse together to form bigger bones. Okay kids, got to go now. This is me zooming out. Tune in next time for more fun facts. Ha! Oh, it's raining. Hey! Have you ever wondered where the rain comes from? Or how the clouds are formed? Well, this is what the water cycle is all about. Come, let's explore. Zoom in! When the sun heats up the rivers and oceans, water becomes water vapor and it rises up in the air. This process is called evaporation. It is the first step of the water cycle. You too can see water vapor at home. Just tell your mummy to heat some water. And as the water gets heated, you'll be able to see the water vapor rising up in the air. When the water vapor reaches up in the sky, it turns into tiny droplets of water. These water droplets, along with various gases and dust particles, come together to form clouds. This is known as condensation. Now, hold a cold lid over the vessel in which you heated water. When you open the lid after some time, you'll be able to see water droplets on the lid. That's exactly what condensation is. When the cloud becomes too heavy and it cannot hold any more water inside, it bursts open to give out rain, hail or snow. This is known as precipitation. As it rains, water gets collected in oceans, lakes and rivers. It even seeps through the soil and becomes groundwater. Thus, water cycle is a continuous process of evaporation, condensation and precipitation. Trivia time! Did you know that even plants sweat? That's called transpiration. That's why it rains more in places with more trees, like hill stations and forests. Sometimes snow directly turns into water vapor without melting into water. That's called sublimation. This happens a lot in cold countries. Oh, I need to run now. It's raining again. So this is me zooming out. Tune in next time for some more fun facts. Dr. Binox. Dr. Binox. Dr. Binox. Oh, hello kids and welcome to my show. Today, let's talk about plants. Plants are very similar to humans and just like humans have different body parts doing different things, similarly, plants too have different parts for different functions. Interesting, isn't it? Let me tell you what the important parts of a plant are. Leaves, bud, flower, stem, fruit and roots. Let's take a closer look at the buds that protect the baby flower or the baby leaf from the harmful elements of nature. This is a flower. It is the most beautiful part of a plant. It's usually colorful and attracts bees and other insects. These are the leaves. The leaf is one of the most important parts of a plant. It has a green pigment called chlorophyll, which absorbs the sunlight and makes food. This is a fruit. A fruit is a part of a plant that contains excess food and seed. All fruits might not be sweet and edible, but is still a fruit. 
And sometimes, they also help the plant to disperse their seed. This is a stem. A stem acts like a pillar of a plant. It holds the plant upright and carries water, food and minerals to the parts of the plant from the roots. The roots help to absorb water and minerals from the soil and also acts as an anchor. When the winds are too harsh, the root makes sure that the plant stays firm in the soil and doesn't get carried away. Trivia time! Did you know 90% of the food that humans eat come from 30 species of plants, but the earth has more than 80,000 species of edible plants? So kids, why don't you rush to your garden and see the parts of the plant yourself? Tune in next time for more fun facts. This is me zooming out. Hey there, it's a lovely sunny day today. So I came down for a sun bath. Don't look at me like that. Didn't your teachers tell you that sunlight is a good source of vitamin D? Hey, don't forget that we trees and plants make our food from sunlight. Yes, you're right, Mr. Tree. Isn't the process called photosynthesis? Yeah. Come friends, let's learn about photosynthesis today. Zoom in. Photosynthesis Doesn't that sound like a big word? Well, don't be bogged down by it. I'll tell you what it means. Photo is a Greek word for light and synthesis is a Greek word for putting together. Now, it's simple. Photosynthesis is using light to put things together. Plants use this process to make their food with the help of sunlight, water and carbon dioxide. Did you know that plants breathe just like us? You didn't? Well, now you do. Plants have tiny openings called the stomata present in their leaves through which they take in carbon dioxide. Yes, they breathe in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen. They also use water and other nutrients to make food which is absorbed by their roots. The leaves contain tiny pigments called the chloroplasts. These pigments take in carbon dioxide, water and sunlight and turn them into sugar and oxygen. The sugar is then used by the plants as their food and the oxygen is given out into the atmosphere. This process as a whole is called photosynthesis. Am I right, Mr. Tree? Yes, you are. Trivia time! Chlorophyll is a green pigment that is found in the chloroplast of the plant. It makes the plant look green. Plants are often known as lungs of the world as they take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen, which the humans breathe. It's time for some more sun bath. So this is me zooming out. Tune in next time for some more fun facts. Ooh, what's that? Ah, that's the pistol. Oh, hello friends. Never heard of that word, right? Well, these flowers smell amazing. Oh. But have you ever wondered what's inside a flower? 
I got you thinking, right? Well, don't think so hard. I'll tell you what the parts of a flower are. Zoom in! There are two kinds of flowers. A flower which has both the male and female parts is called a perfect flower. And the flower which has either male or female parts is called an imperfect flower. Wondering what the male and female parts of a flower are? Here they are! Ta-da! Anther and filament are the male parts of a flower. Jointly, they are called stamen. Stigma, style, ovary and ovules are the female parts. And together, they are called the pistil. The filament is a long tube that supports the anther. Hmm. Wondering what these tiny little particles are? Well, they are the pollen grains produced by the anther. But hey, what do these pollen grains do? The pollen grains help these flowers reproduce and give birth to baby plants. Many a times, insects sit on flowers and carry these pollen grains to the stigma, which is the sticky surface at the top of the pistil, which helps in trapping and holding the pollen grains. Sometimes, these pollen grains are also carried by the wind. The pollen grains land on the stigma, germinate and form pollen tubes that grow through the spaces inside the style. The style is a tube-like structure that holds up the stigma. At the end of the pollen tube is the pollen tip which reaches the ovary and fertilizes the egg. When these pollen grains fuse with the ovules of the flower, a seed is formed which later grows up to become a handsome plant. Oops! I forgot to tell you about the petals and the sepals. A petal is a protective layer for the style and stigma. It's also the most attractive part of the flower. Petals attract insects and are usually the reason why we love flowers. The sepals are green leaf-like structures at the base of a flower which protect the developing bud of a plant. Trivia time! Broccoli, the vegetable that we all love, <laughs> is nothing but a flower. After pollination, the ovary of the flower becomes a fruit. Okay kids, bye for now. This is me zooming out. Tune in next time for more fun facts. Whoa! I'm no insect, Mr. Frog. Let me go! Hey there! What a lovely morning, isn't it? Well, it indeed is for me. I just got saved. Oops! This reminds me that I got to tell you about the food chain in our ecosystem. Zoom in! A food chain describes how different organisms eat each other for survival. The chain usually starts with a plant and ends with an animal. Just like how you saw the plant being eaten by a caterpillar and how it ended up in the frog's stomach. The food chain comprises of the producers, consumers and decomposers. Plants are producers. They absorb sunlight which is readily available, water and other nutrients from the soil and produce their food through a process called photosynthesis. Plants are the only living being which creates new energy for the other living beings. Consumers Animals are consumers. This is because they don't produce energy. They just use it up. Animals that eat plants are called primary consumers or herbivores. 
animals that eat other animals are called secondary consumers or carnivores. If a carnivore eats another carnivore, it is called a tertiary consumer. Some animals play both roles, eating both plants and animals. They are called omnivores. Decomposers Bacteria and fungi are decomposers. They are also called detrivores. They eat decaying matter that is dead plants and animals and in the process they break them down and decompose them. When that happens, they release nutrients and mineral salts back into the soil which then is used by the plants. Trivia time! Humans are at the end of the food chain. They eat both plants and animals that have consumed other forms of energy. A food web is a natural interconnection of different food chains. So, this is me zooming out. Tune in next time for some more fun facts. Hmm, there seems to be something on this bread. I wonder what it is. Aha, uh -huh. that's interesting. So, do you want to have a look? Come here, take a look. <laughs> Wondering what they are? These are microorganisms. So, do you want to learn more about them? Zoom in! There are some living organisms that cannot be seen with bare eyes and can only be visible with a powerful microscope. These organisms are called microorganisms or microbes. There are five types of living microorganisms. Fungi, bacteria, viruses, algae, and protozoa. Most fungi feed through microscopic threads called hyphae. These threads dig into a food source and release chemicals that break down the food. Then the fungi digest it and use it as nutrients. Fungi feed on dead animals, bird droppings, manure, fruit. They eat almost anything that was once alive. Bacteria are single-celled spherical, spiral or rod-shaped organisms. They are a few micrometers long. You'd be surprised to know that there are more bacteria in your mouth than the number of people in this world. Bacteria can be found everywhere. They are in the air, the soil and water, in plants and animals, including you and me. Viruses are single-celled microorganisms. They can only survive inside the cells of other living organisms. Once they enter a living organism, they multiply and cause diseases like conjunctivitis, chickenpox, measles, etc. Viruses are said to be so small that 500 million of them could fit on the head of a pin. Algae are organisms that are found all over the world. They are important because they make much of the Earth's oxygen. There are about 27,000 different species or types of algae. The word protozoa means little animal. This is because the protozoa hunt and gather other microbes as food and hence act like tiny animals. Protozoa mainly feed on bacteria but they also eat other protozoa and other organic matter. Trivia time! Some areas of the Indian Ocean light up at night. The light is caused by tiny sea algae, dinoflagellata. Human bites are one of the most dangerous animal bites in the world due to the bacteria in their mouth. Time for me to order some pizza and fill my tummy.
After all, the bread slices got eaten by fungi. Huh, this is me zooming out. Tune in next time for more fun facts. Hello? Hmm, oh Mr. Bear. Wondering why Mr. Bear isn't getting up? That's because he is not sleeping. He is hibernating. Come with me if you haven't heard of this word. Zoom in! When it's really cold, animals tend to go into deep sleep. Sometimes even for a couple of months. They curl up in a safe place and stay there until winter ends. They do this so that they can survive throughout the winter. When the weather is freezing cold and the food is scarce, this process is known as hibernation. Just when winter is round the corner, the animals eat enormous amounts of food and store fat to keep them alive while they are hibernating. Some animals collect and store food before hibernating. At times, during hibernation, these animals wake up to eat and again return to hibernation. Animals that hibernate are called hibernators. They are bats, snakes, bears, hedgehogs, ground squirrels, groundhogs, marmots. Hibernators like dark and quiet places. Some go underground or into caves, wherever they feel safe from predators and attackers. Hey, but how does one know whether an animal is sleeping or hibernating? It's simple. During this phase, the hibernator's body temperature drops and its rate of breathing slows down, which doesn't happen during sleep. Trivia time! Some animals go into a state of hibernation during summers too. And that is called estivation. When a bat hibernates, its heart rate decreases so much that it might not take a breath for up to an hour. So kids, time for me to hibernate till I come up with something interesting for the next episode. This is me zooming out. Tune in next time for more fun facts. 7, 8, 9, I hope you all have hidden guys. 10, ready or not, I'm coming. Hey, there you are Mr. Bird. No, no, don't try to hide. Gotcha. And there you are Miss Butterfly. I need to find Mr. Chameleon now. Hmm. My, my, that's going to be a tough task. That's right, my friend. Nobody ever defeated Mr. Chameleon in this game. After all, he can change his color and trick you anytime. Good luck, Dr. Binox. We are off. Did you see that, friends? Let Mr. Chameleon hide for some more time. Till then, I'll tell you why do chameleons change colors. Zoom in! Chameleons are pretty famous for their color changing abilities. But do you know why they change their color? Well, they do this to regulate their body temperatures, hide from predators, or to signal their intentions to other chameleons. There are several layers in a chameleon skin. The outermost layer is transparent. Beneath this layer, there are few more layers that contain a pigment called chromatophores, which contain light reflecting cells. The chromatophores at each level are filled with sacs of different kinds of pigment. The deepest layer contains melanophores, which contain brown melanin. Melanin is the same pigment that gives different shades to the human skin. The layer above this contains cells called iridophores, which contain a blue pigment that reflects blue and white light. Above this layer, 
There are cells called xanthrophores and erythrophores, which contain yellow and red pigments respectively. When a chameleon experiences any kind of change in its body temperature or mood, the chromatophores expand and contract and hence there's a change in its color. Chameleons generally use bold colors to communicate to their friends around. Males become bright to establish their dominance and sometimes turn dark when they are aggressive. When they want to hide from their predators, they turn to green or brown and merge with the surroundings. Trivia time! Did you know that a chameleon can see in two directions at the same time? Yes, it has a 360 degree vision. A chameleon's tongue strikes its victim at 0.07 seconds. <laughs> that is really fast. So you couldn't find me, Dr. Binox. Well, you're indeed the champion of hide and seek. So this is me zooming out. Tune in next time for more fun facts.